Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George. Sure, pour me a cup, Gracie. You know, Maxwell House is always good to the last <laughs> drop. And that drop's good, too. Yeah. Yes, it's Maxwell House coffee time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With yours truly, Toby Reed, Hans Conried, Gail Gordon, Meredith Wilson of the Maxwell House Orchestra, and Bill Goodwin. For America's Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for America's everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. Well, George put off his Christmas shopping until this week, and then he was caught in that final frantic stampede of women shoppers and almost trampled to death. We find him now seeking refuge in the corner cigar store where he meets Bill Goodwin. Hi, George. Oh, hello, Bill. Hey, you look kind of rumpled. I am, Bill. Bunch of women shoppers knocked me down and walked on me. Holy smoke, I'll say they did. Well, look at your poor face where they stepped on it. It's all battered and beaten. What a horrible mess. They didn't touch my face. Oh, yeah. I dread going back to that store, but I got to get Gracie's Christmas present. I'm, a, I'm already in the, in the doghouse with her. How come? Oh, a little slip of the tongue, Bill. This morning, Gracie said, I'd like to have Mother here for Christmas. Can she fly down? And I said, why not? I never saw an old crow that couldn't. <laughs> George, I'm surprised you don't get along with Gracie's mother. You're, you're the same type, the same temperament, same age. <laughs> Very comical tonight, Willie. <laughs> well, anyway, I um, I wouldn't send her a plane fare. Well, how does Gracie's mother feel about you? She despises me. Are you sure? Oh, yes. She's never come right out and said so. It's just the little thing she's done. Mm-hmm. A little poison in my soup. <laughs> little dynamite under the bed. Just the little thing. Little thing. Yes, yes. But when you put them together, they spell drop dead. <laughs> I see. So that's why I'm knocking myself out to get this Christmas present for Gracie. But after I fight my way to the counter, the girl ignores me. Oh, well, I can get that girl to wait on you, George. I've dated her. You don't even know what store I was in. Makes no difference. If she's a girl, I've dated her. <laughs> Well, thanks, Romeo, but I'll handle it myself. This time, I'm going to assert myself. I'll knock those women right and left. I'll fight my way to the counter, grab the click by the neck, and say, now, see here. I want a Christmas present for my wife. So get busy and sell me a... Um, um, what's the matter? Uh, I forgot to find out what Gracie wanted. <laughs> Gracie. Yes, dear? Uh, what would you like for Christmas this year? Well, George, I don't want to just come right out and tell you. That would take all the fun out of it. Well, how else can I find out what you want? Well, I've written some clues for you. Uh, clues? Yes. You can guess it from those. Now, here's your first clue. Read it. First for Santa Claus. Second for me. <laughs> my eyes are blue. My initial is G. Bring me a present, large, not small. And I'll say Happy New Year in the summer. What is this, truth or consequences? Well, George, you felt so bad about not guessing, Miss Hush. And this will sort of give you another chance. Look, just tell me what you want for Christmas and stop making yourself a Ralph Edwards. Oh, oh, but this is much more fun. Oh, all right. If it means so much to you, I'll play your game. Good. Now, let's see. First for Santa Claus, second for me. Dancer is first, prancer is second. A prancer could be a horse. You want a horse for Christmas? Oh, uh, what would I do with a horse? Well, you're always banging up the fenders, and if you had a horse, you wouldn't have to drive the car. Oh, that's silly. A horse couldn't drive a car. <laughs> well, skip it. So I missed the first guess. Yeah, that'll cost you 50 cents. 50 cents? Oh, I forgot to tell you. Every time you guess wrong, you drop 50 cents in this bowl for charity. What charity? Oh, a very worthy one, George. It's for a poor mother who's expecting. Oh, well, that sounds like a worthy cause. Okay, here's my 50 cents. Thank you, dear. Now, try again and guess what I want for Christmas. Let's see. Bring me a present, large, not small, 
And I'll say Happy New Year in the summer. Well, think, Judge. Mm. Concentrate. Say, I think the Chinese celebrate New Year in the summer. Now, let's see. Chinese. No, I don't want chop suey. <laughs> Gracie. That'll be another 50 cents. Honey. Honey's wrong, too. <laughs> another 50 cents. Nuts. Wrong again. <laughs> it's a dollar and a half you owe the bowl. Oh, well, it's for charity. Mm, I'm glad I'm using this punch bowl. Looks like I'll fill it. The right you're going, you'll fill the rose bowl. <laughs> Come in. Hello, all. Oh, hello, hello, Meredith. Meredith. Say, Mayor, maybe you could help me. Gracie has written down on this piece of paper what she wants for Christmas. Really? As a boy, I used to write down what I wanted and mail it to Santa Claus at the North Pole. <laughs> of course, now I'm older and wiser. Oh, yes. of course. Now I just go to the nearest department store and hand it to him in person. <laughs> I'll be glad to hand him your letter, Gracie. Uh, that won't be necessary, Meredith. No. This is something Gracie wants me to give. Uh... Oh, yes. Well, uh, would you be interested in hearing what my Uncle Tobias gives my Aunt Tilly for Christmas? Uh, no, Meredith. Well, I... sir, every year my Uncle Tobias gives my Aunt Tilly a lock of his hair. And she gives him a lock of her hair. They've done that now for 20 years. Oh, how sweet. This year he's giving her a wig and she's giving him a toupee. <laughs> Meredith, I'm not interested in your uncle. I'm trying to find out what Gracie wants for Christmas. And she's put it in the form of a riddle. Oh, I see. Read it to me, George. First for Santa Claus, second for me. My eyes are blue, my initial are G. Bring me a present, large, not small, and I'll say Happy New Year in the summer. Well, that's quite simple. You figured it out? Certainly. She wants Martha Graham for Christmas. Oh, that's what she wants. <laughs> Mighty pleasant melodies, Meredith, with a swing to the rhythm that sets your feet to beating. True, Toby. It's the rhythmic beat of a shottish, which is a slower Scotch version of the polka. The Scotch polka? That sounds good. Oh, it is good, Toby. Now, here's another famous and familiar shottish. Let's see if you recognize it. First, we'll start with just the mellow harmony. Now, we'll add a counter melody for richness. Sounds mighty smooth, Meredith, but I still can't guess the name of it. You'll be surprised, my boy. Listen while we add that vigorous, shottish rhythm. And now we'll combine the melody to complete this blend of a familiar shottish at its best. Well, of course, it's Paul Linke's beautiful glowworm. And friends, just as all our favorite melodies are created by expertly blending many orchestral parts, so too with the creation of America's favorite coffee, Maxwell House. The superb quality, the famous good-to-the-last-drop flavor of Maxwell House, demands that not just one, but many choice Latin American coffees be included in the final superb Maxwell House blend. With great care and skill, the Maxwell House experts test and select Manizales for mellowness. For richness, they add Medellins. For vigor, they choose other choice coffees. And for fine full body, they add Bucaramangas. up to flavor perfection of America's favorite coffee, Maxwell House. A blend so completely satisfying, it's bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee at any price. So friends, enjoy the extra flavor of Maxwell House coffee yourself. You can, for just a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee sold. 
Ask for Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. Stockings for Christmas? No. Drop another 50 cents in the bowl. Purse? No. Gloves? Suede gloves? Yeah. Brown suede gloves? Yeah. Hand stitched? Yes. No. <laughs> Gracie, I can't guess what you want for Christmas from the silly clue. All right, I'll give you the next clue. Good, let's hear it. Roses are red, water is wet, Truman is president, and how have you been? <laughs> Uh, that's the clue. Yes. Let's go back to the first one. No, George, work on it. I'll leave you alone so you can concentrate. Concentrate my foot. Take this clue next door to Dr. Miller. Only a psychiatrist can figure this out. Oh, hello, George. Doc, I want to read you something. Very well. Roses are red, water is wet, Truman is president, and how have you been? <laughs> what does that mean to you? It means you came to me just in time. You're cracking up. <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't write it. Gracie wrote it. Oh. It's supposed to tell me what Gracie wants for Christmas. Does it tell you anything? Definitely. It tells me Gracie needs something for the house. What? Padded walls. <laughs> I, I hope that you could look at this clue and tell me what she wanted. Well, I could, George, if I understood how her mind worked. But to determine that, I'd have to psychoanalyze her. Okay, Doc. I've got to find out what this clue means. Every time I guess wrong, it costs me 50 cents. So I'll probably save money even with your fee. Why, I wouldn't accept a fee to psychoanalyze Gracie. Why not? For a psychiatrist to get into her mind would be like a burglar getting into Fort Knox. <laughs> I see what you mean. I'll send her right over. Now then, Mrs. Burns, just lie down on this couch here and relax completely. Thank you, Doctor. First, just a few general questions. How old are you? I'd rather not say. <laughs> Mrs. Burns, I'm a doctor. You can tell me anything. Now, how old are you? Nineteen. Nineteen? <laughs> you said I could tell you anything. I mean, if you tell me your age, I won't let it go any further. Oh. Now, how old are you? Nineteen. <laughs> Still nineteen. I'm not letting it go any further either. <laughs> Mrs. Burns, how long have you been married? Fifteen years. <laughs> Then if you're 19 years old, you were married when you were four. Oh, <laughs> Doctor, you've got me trapped. <laughs> I see I'll have to tell the truth. Good. Now, how old are you? 20. <laughs> <laughs> Let's skip your age and go on to the next question. Do you have any disturbing dreams, especially dreams that recur again and again? Oh, yes, yes. Every night for a long time, I dreamed that the Iceman came and put two 50-pound cakes of ice in the middle of my back. Very interesting. I must attempt a solution. Oh, I solved it. How? Well, I made George sleep with his socks on. <laughs> Yes, I see. Well, now, Mrs. Burns, I'd like to give you a simple little test which will enable me to analyze your thought process. Mm -hmm. Now, this is called a word association test. Oh, and how does it work? Well, I will say a word, and that word will suggest something to you. Whatever it is, you say it. I say whatever I think of. Right. Left. <laughs> I hadn't started yet. Oh. Now, here we go. Picture. Frame. Powder. Pup. Telephone. Thank you. Hello? <laughs> now, what does the telephone suggest? Nothing. Nobody's on the wire. <laughs> Mrs. Burns, the telephone did not ring. When I said telephone, you should have said something like Alexander Graham Bell. 
I see. Let's proceed. Army. Navy. Soldiers. Sailors. Wax. Vivian McGee and Molly. <laughs> Wax made you think of Fibber McGee and Mark. They sell it. <laughs> I was referring to W A C S. So was I, Johnson's. <laughs> Let's proceed. Bing Crosby. Singing. Spencer Tracy. Acting. Charles Boyer. Charles Boyer. Oh, no. no. <laughs> you don't trick me into that one. I see you taking notes. So? So my husband can read. Let's proceed. Hello? Oh, yes, Grace is right here. Telephone. Alexander Graham Bell. <laughs> was your husband. No, I'm married to George Burns. <laughs> That'll be enough for the word association test. <laughs> now, suppose we delve into your childhood memories, your family life. Was it happy and normal? Oh, yes. Every morning, bright and early, the sun would come streaming through the kitchen windows and wake us up. We'd, we'd jump out of bed. Oh, wait a minute, Gracie. Your family slept in the kitchen? Well, certainly. Where did you expect them to sleep? In the bedroom. Stupid of me, wasn't it? <laughs> we couldn't sleep in the bedroom. That's where we did our cooking. You cooked in the bedroom. Why? Because it was upstairs. Why did you cook upstairs? To keep the smell of food away from the kitchen where we slept. <laughs> That'll be enough of your normal childhood memory. <laughs> now let us try the mental coordination test. See if you can place these square pegs and round pegs in their proper holes. George, I have completed the psychoanalysis of your wife. Swell, Doc. Oh, yeah. First I gave her the Binet Simon intelligence quotient test. Then I traced her mental processes with the word association test. Then I gave her the Bechteret Mendel reflex test, the Rorschach ink blot test, applied the factors of heredity and environment, and I knew her mind like a book. Wonderful. I then applied this knowledge to the clue she'd given you, and I was able to make a guess as to what she wanted for Christmas. Well? Where do I drop my 50 cents? <laughs> Wilson and the orchestra and the great old tune, True. I'll never find out the present you want from these clues. 
What have I given you for other Christmases? Well, uh, the first year we were married, you gave me a string with one pearl on it. You said that every year you'd add to it. And I have, too. Say, maybe that's it. You want me to add to it again? Oh, no, you better not. The string is so long now, I keep stepping on the pearl. <laughs> No help. Now, I better give... I better give you another clue. Yes, a clue and some aspirin. Yes, I, I won't be a minute, dear. Okay, dear. Please, uh, come in. Hi, George. Say, did you get Gracie's present? No, Bill, I can't find out what she wants. If you were Gracie, what would you like for Christmas? Oh, not a thing, George. Gee, I'd feel that I'd received life's supreme gift when I got wonderful, handsome, talented, generous you... Bill, you haven't said anything that nice to me for a long time. No, not since last Christmas. <laughs> oh, I get it, Bill. You don't have to hint to me. Don't we always exchange presents? Well, I always exchange yours. <laughs> you, uh, you don't like the cigars I've been sending you? Is that what they were? Yes. <laughs> That's what they were. Every Christmas, I give you and Meredith each a box of those cigars. Two for quarter. Oh, they're robbing you, George. You shouldn't pay more than ten cents a box. <laughs> we'll try it again next week. <laughs> George, here comes that big oil millionaire from Texas. Oh, yeah, Mr. Judson. Yeah, yeah. Come in. Howdy, Burns. Oh, hello, Mr. Judson. You know Bill Goodwin. Oh, sure. You bet I do. Say, Bill. I heard you talk about that Maxwell House copy, so I got me some. Really? Well, isn't it, uh, Isn't it wonderfully satisfying? Yes, sir. Rich and mellow. Oh, good to the last drop. The most delicious coffee I ever tasted. You bet. Uh, what part of Texas they grow it in? <laughs> Mr. Jetson, the superb coffees that go into Maxwell House are grown down near the equator. Oh, southern Texas, huh? <laughs> Got down around Galveston. Uh, Mr. Judson... Well, now, it's the best darn coffee in the whole world, and that cup I had this morning sure was worth the $1,000 I gave for it. Wait a minute. You gave $1,000 for it? Why, Mr. Judson, Maxwell House costs but a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee you can buy. Oh, I know that, but I had to leave the girl a tip. <laughs> Kids gotta make a living. <laughs> Say, uh, uh, Bill, uh -huh. uh, tell me some more about that fine Galveston coffee. Uh, is it popular? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Jetson, with more than a thousand brands to choose from, more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee in the world. But it's not grown in Galveston. It ain't? No, sir. It comes from places like Colombia, Brazil, Guatemala, Mexico, Salvador, Venezuela. Oh, the suburbs of Galveston. <laughs> you might as well give up, Bill. To this guy, anything that's the best comes from Texas. The best coffee, the best-looking men, the best actors, the best lovers. Really? Well, in that uh, case, I reckon I'll be moseying. Uh, so long, partner. <laughs> so long, Tex. Mr. Judson, maybe you can help me. I can't find out what my wife wants for Christmas. Well, now, I I'm having the same trouble. I know my wife wants a string of beads, but I don't know what kind. Well, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to get a four string. Rubies, emeralds, sapphires, and diamonds, and she can throw away the three she don't want. <laughs> well, uh, you can afford that. You've got $26 million. No, no, that's $27 million. Yep, yep. You see, we had a little hard luck down home. Grandpa was out in the yard rocking in his rocking chair. He reared back a mite too far. The rocker dug in the ground, and up come another darned oil well. <laughs> you call that hard luck? Well, oh, Grandpa never get that stuff out of his beard. <laughs> Tough break for Grandpa, wasn't it? Uh, George? Yes. George, I've got another clue. Oh, hello, Mr. Judson. Howdy, little lady. See, your husband tells me he's having trouble guessing what you want for Christmas. Yes, he is. He even guessed that I wanted a horse. Well, now, that wouldn't be bad. You could bring him down to Texas and ride him on my range. Oh, no, I wouldn't do that. 
If the gas was on, he'd burn his feet. <laughs> if the... Does this one give me a real hint? Well, read it and see. Use your brain. Don't be a goat. Why not ask me if I'd like a mink coat? (laughs) How's that for a hint? So that's it. You want a mink coat for Christmas? Can I have one? No. That isn't it, then. (laughs) Drop another 50 cents in the bowl. Now, wait a minute. That's a cheat. This clue can't mean anything but a mink coat. Yes, it can. Now, here, I'll help you. Now, look at the second line. Don't be a goat. Now, what do goats give? Milk. And uh, what do they make out of goat's milk? Cheese. Well? You want goat cheese for Christmas? <laughs> Drop another 50 cents in the bowl. Gracie. Now, that's a dollar you owe the punch bowl, Joe. Oh, all right. Uh, what charity did you say this was for? Uh, poor mother who's expect. Oh, a mother's expect. Okay. <laughs> now, don't give up. Let's take the first line of the clue. Use your brain. Where is my brain? That's tougher than what do you want for Christmas. <laughs> I'm trying to help you. Where is my brain? In your head. And what do I wear on my head? A hat. Oh, that's it. Of course you want a hat. Drop, Drop another, another 50 cents in the floor. <laughs> Thank you. Now, let's take the third line of the clue. Wait a minute. You're going to help me again? Yes. Yeah. easier that way. Oh, you're getting discouraged. I'm getting discouraged, yes. Well, let me see how much money is in the bowl. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, twenty-eight dollars. Never mind, dear. You needn't make any more guesses. Well, hallelujah. Now tell me, what do you want for Christmas? I don't know. You don't know? No, just get me anything at all. Then why did we go through this guessing routine? Well, so I could get this twenty-eight dollars to send to my mother. It's your mother who's expecting? Yeah, she's expecting to visit this uh, year in her plane. Her a plane? She's got to give me her plane fare. <laughs> George and Gracie will return in just a moment. Join us again Thursday when we'll all be back. George Burns, Gracie Allen, Bill Goodwin, Meredith Wilson, and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and yours truly, Toby Reed. And now, here are our stars. Uh, Well, Gracie, how would you like a silver comb and brush set for Christmas? Drop 50 cents in the bowl. You're going back to that again? Well, yes, I called Mama, and she wants to bring my brother Willie along, too. Good (laughs) night. Hey, where do you live, Lucille? I live down in Mobile. And what do you eat, Lucille? Eat? I eat jello. Jello in those six delicious flavors strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. Flavors locked in by a process exclusive with jello, just as the name jello is exclusive. Yes, that name's a trademark, the property of General Foods, and it tells you you're getting the genuine, the one and only jello gelatin dessert. Jello, 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 jello. Janky Oh. Until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's number one preferred brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. The George Burns and Gracie Allen Show is written by Paul Henning and Keith Fowler. And now stay tuned in for Noah Webster Sales, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.